In the world of Formula One racing, where speed and spectacle often take centre stage, there's a race that stands out as a sad reminder of the sport's dark side. It's the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix, a race marked not by thrilling competition, but by tragedy and controversy. So let's delve into this gripping tale. Now, before the race even began, there was already trouble brewing. The race took place on the streets of Monjuic in Barcelona, and the drivers weren't happy with the condition of the circuit. Unlike modern tracks built with meticulous attention to safety, Monjuic was a makeshift course hastily put together. The main problem was with the barriers, those crucial barriers that protect drivers from crashing into hard concrete walls. These barriers were not properly secured because the organisers were in a rush to get the track ready. This was a big concern for the drivers because just two years earlier, a talented French driver named Francois Severe had tragically lost his life in Watkins Glen because of a poor barrier setup. Understandably, the drivers were furious and they decided to go on strike. But here's where things got complicated. The race organisers, following the norms of the time, threatened legal action against the drivers if they didn't participate. Even more concerning was the possibility that the Guardia Civil, a Spanish police force, would seize their racing cars, which were already in the paddock, if they didn't turn up for the race. With heavy hearts, the drivers had no choice but to reluctantly agree to race, except for one brave soul, Emerson Fittipaldi. During the qualifying session, Fittipaldi made a powerful statement by driving his car incredibly slowly for three laps before deciding not to race at all. He left for Brazil, his home country, in protest. The remaining drivers forged ahead with qualifying, and Nicky Lauda secured pole position with Clay Regassoni alongside him on the front row. However, the tension in the paddock remained high. Behind the scenes, team owner Ken Tyrrell recognised the danger and personally worked through the night to fix the barriers, knowing that the drivers' lives were on the line. Race Day As the lights out signal ignited the start of the race, it unleashed a chain of dramatic events that would define the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix. The previous day's glory for Nicky Lauda and Clay Regazzoni was about to be overshadowed by chaos. Not long after the race started, Lauda found himself in a collision with Mario Andretti and Vittorio Brambilla, while Regazzoni's car brushed against Andretti's car. Lauda had no choice but to retire from the race due to the damage, while Regassoni made a pit stop to fix his car's suspension and managed to rejoin the race. Patrick Depaille had to retire from the race because he incurred terminal damage, while Arturo Mazzario and Wilson Fittipaldi, in a show of solidarity, decided to quit the race in protest. Amidst the turmoil, James Hunt, John Watson and Mario Andretti emerged as the leading trio. However, this fragile order quickly unravelled. Jody Schechter's Tyrrell had an engine explosion which sprayed oil on the track, making it extremely slippery. This oil caused Alan Jones and Mark Donoghue to lose control of their cars. Even the race leader, Hunt, couldn't avoid a collision on the treacherous oil-covered surface. Now, as the race continued, the number of cars dropping out continued to increase. John Watson had to deal with intense vibrations in his car, Mario Andretti's suspension failed, and Tom Price collided head-on with Tony Bryce. In the midst of this chaos, Rolf Stommelen, Carlos Pache and Ronnie Peterson emerged as the new leaders. Jean-Pierre Jarrier and Brambilla had to pit for tyre changes, further reshuffling the standings, and Peterson's race ended after a collision with Francois Migo. With a whopping 14 drivers out of the race, it became evident that this was turning into an attrition race. Rolf Stommelen, hungry for his first victory after a career with few podium finishes, led the pack. Close behind was Carlos Pache, eager to build on his recent maiden win in Brazil and maintain his stellar season. On lap 26, Rolf Stommelen, driving for Embassy Hill, experienced a catastrophic rear wing failure. What followed was nothing short of a nightmare. Stommelen's car spiralled out of control, crashing violently into the trackside wall. The impact launched the vehicle into the air and it sailed over the barrier on the opposite side of the track. In a bizarre twist, the car bounced off the barrier and landed back on the road. Caught in the chaos, Carlos Pache tried to evade Stommelen's airborne car. Remarkably, Pache emerged from the wreckage unharmed, but Stommelen was not as fortunate. He suffered multiple fractures, including injuries to his ribs, leg and wrist. Tragically, the situation took an even darker turn. 
Stomlin's car smashed through the barrier, descending upon a group of unsuspecting spectators. Four individuals lost their lives that day. Joaquin Benaches Morera, a firefighter, Andres Ruiz Villanova, a spectator, Antonio Font Bayari, and Mario de Roya. Despite the gravity of the situation, the race inexplicably continued for another four laps, a full 10 minutes, possibly due to damaged telephone lines or, some speculate, mismanagement by race control. When the race finally stopped on lap 29, Jochen Mass was declared the winner, with Jackie X in second place and Jean Pierre Jarrier initially taking third. However, Jarrier's overtaking when the yellow flag was out resulted in a 60 second penalty, promoting Carlos Ruterman to third. Because the race was halted before 60% of the scheduled distance, something unusual happened. Only half points were awarded, and this had never happened before in the championship's history. Yet, amid the chaos and tragedy, a bright spot emerged in the form of Lella Lombardi. She secured 0.5 points for a 6th place finish, making history as the first woman to score points in a Formula 1 Grand Prix. In the wake of the tragic events that unfolded during the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix, the lives and careers of those involved took different paths. Rolf Stommelen, despite the horrific accident, continued his racing career. After undergoing rehabilitation with Alfa Romeo, he made a successful return to sports car racing. Stommelin's talent shone brightly as he achieved victory at the gruelling 24 hours of Daytona not once, but three times. One of the remarkable highlights came when he co-drove with Dick Barber and the renowned actor Paul Newman at the 24 hours of Le Mans in 1979. Thanks to Stommelin's exceptional speed, they came incredibly close to winning the prestigious race. Tragically, Stommelin's life was cut short in 1983 during the six hours of Riverside when he was involved in a high-speed collision caused by a rear-wing failure. For Carlos Pache, the Formula 1 season continued. He went on to have his best season in 1975, finishing a respectable six in the championship standings and securing two additional podium finishes at the Monaco and British Grands Prix. Although he faced challenges in the 1976 season, 1977 appeared to hold promise for the Brazilian, starting with a strong second-place finish in Argentina. Tragically, Pache's life was abruptly cut short in Brazil due to a devastating airplane crash in his homeland. It was another heart-wrenching loss. As for Jochen Mass, the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix remained the sole victory in his Formula 1 career. Unfortunately, Mass's luck didn't improve significantly in subsequent events. In the 1982 French Grand Prix, Mass was involved in a dramatic collision with Mauro Baldi during the race. Both Mass and Baldi's cars were catapulted over the track's barriers and erupted into flames. Miraculously, Mass emerged from the wreckage unharmed. However, this incident led him to make a life-altering decision. He chose to step away from Formula 1 and redirected his focus towards sports car racing. For Jackie Ix, the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix marked the end of his podium finishes in Formula 1. However, retirement from F1 didn't signify the conclusion of his illustrious racing journey. Ix transitioned into sports car racing, where he became a dominant force. He achieved incredible success at the legendary 24 Hours of Le Mans, clinching victory an astounding six times. His triumphs extended beyond Le Mans as he conquered other prestigious races such as the Bathurst 1000 and the demanding Dakar Rally. Carlos Ruterman, who secured third place in the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix, would go on to achieve even greater success later in his Formula 1 career. In 1981, he embarked on a remarkable championship campaign, claiming victory in nine races and coming remarkably close to dethroning Nelson Piquet for the title. Although he narrowly missed out on the championship, Reutemann remained a formidable force in the sport. However, in a surprising turn of events, he decided to depart from Formula 1 in 1982, choosing to pursue a career in politics, instead of continuing his racing journey. Sadly, Reutemann's life faced its share of challenges, and he passed away on July 7th, 2021. So, after hearing all this, what are your thoughts about this tragic weekend? Let us know what you think in the comment section down below.